On the right is something that's very common in my world now, which is you have many, many plans prepared by different people. These were all done by different actors, many of them private sector actors, trying to understand what the big dig would mean to them, covering virtually every square centimeter of this territory, and no one had ever put them together. So we created this collage where you could actually see, and people could see each other's plans, what was this picture that was being described here. This was really, if you added all this up, this was the collective projection through time of what might happen as a result of the big dig, or as people had imagined it. So all of that led to this project, and it has another dimension, because these streets began to be referred to by the mayor and our team as 21st century streets, and one of the attributes that they would have quite literally is the streets would be conveyors of information, that we would use uh, the most advanced technologies on the streets so that people wandering around downtown Boston would actually be able, either on their own handheld devices or on devices that were on the street itself, to inform themselves about all the institutions, all the events, all of the attributes of the neighborhoods through which they were passing. So there, there's a kind of very direct correlation between the virtual world and the actual world. And as you know, many people are exploring different technologies that are doing this. Um, just a few examples of, of how powerful this is. This, this is uh, one of these. This is City Hall Plaza on the right, extending through the historic Shawmut Peninsula, which is the origin of the city of Boston, which is now the North End on Hanover and Salem. At the point where it crosses the Greenway, what is forming is a market, a great public market, building on the hay market, which had been crushed into a tiny remnant of itself by the central artery and is now reviving as not just a market that's selling remainder goods for a couple of days a week, but something that will serve this growing downtown population. So again, all about common ground. This is the uh, link from the famous state house that you see at the far end of the photograph on the lower right, uh, a wonderful historic structure out to the end of the historic Long Wharf. And here's a link along Broad Street. And then just another kind of simple before and after simulation. This was a world where it was all about moving automobiles and parking automobiles. Subtle adjustments, now the pedestrians have primacy, the sidewalks are being widened. Uh, the very thing is happening on Granville Street, just uh, a couple of blocks from here uh, as we sit here, um, making those adjustments, introducing a new kind of fabric to the streets. So third project in Boston is Boston University on the Charles River. This is uh, in Brookline leading into Boston. We're looking back toward downtown from the west. This is further along the Charles River. Uh, you'll see some common themes emerging. Again, you need to look back to look forward. You have to play this film sequence through time to understand it. In 1918, there was a visionary plan for Boston University, which you see in the upper right. I'm going to show you an enlargement of that by an architect called Cram. It was really about a university on the Charles River called, uh, not surprisingly, the Charles River Campus. 1950 to 1970, there was the um, infrastructure invasion of that period when cars were dominant, which included what you see under construction, Storrow Drive which severed the university from the Charles River, uh, the Massachusetts Turnpike, um, all coming in and having a powerful effect. And then from 1970 to 2007, the university went into a defensive mode, uh, doing extensive land banking for its future and trying to stabilize the surrounding neighborhoods. So here's that image, early 20th century image, uh, which was about that connection to the river and here's what happened, literally the creation of a cloverleaf, a highway cloverleaf right in the heart of the city, right in the heart of the university. Uh, you can see the Massachusetts Turnpike, which is plowed right through. You can see Storrow Drive, uh, which is the artery right along the river, and this great gaping hole right in the heart of the campus. So 
we, this is a really primitive way of uh, portraying to the university's board of governors and the president and the community this world in motion. So they needed to understand not only their own needs, they needed to understand what the Boston Red Sox were doing in Fenway Park at the right hand end of the image. Their land is the darker brown color. What's in lighter brown are all the things that everybody else was doing that they needed to know about. They needed to understand that. They needed to understand at the other end of the slide that Harvard University was moving across the river from Cambridge into Boston in an area called Alston. They needed to understand that the Longwood Medical Area at the bottom of the slide was also expanding, that there were new transportation plans, new infrastructure that would come right through the heart of their campus. So they needed to be able to plan with full knowledge of all these other events and to find integrative strategies that would actually tie what they were doing, their objectives, to these other larger objectives. So it is all quite literally about convergence. There's a convergence of interests getting the community in all its various parts, and we're, we're talking about three municipalities here. We're talking about Boston primarily, Brookline and Cambridge, all of the major institutions, the universities, the health institutions, and the various levels of government, state, federal, and municipal, and all of the agencies thereof, to understand how this would affect them and what role they would play. And in fact, we've been extremely successful with this convergence at actually leveraging uh, state and federal funding as this has gone on. And then the overlap of themes getting transportation, public realm, and land use, or if you want to put it in other terms, getting people in the development world, architects, landscape architects, municipal planners, civil, municipal, transportation engineers, all of these people to understand each other's realities and to come up with those solutions that were doing more than one thing, not just juggling one ball at a time, but actually dealing with the levels of complexity. So one of the things that came out of this, which is often the case, is that your worst problem is your greatest opportunity. And in fact, that hole, that uh, crater that you saw there in the middle of the Boston University campus where the Mass Pike crossed Commonwealth Avenue uh, and the BU Bridge, actually has the opportunity, if the conditions are resolved, if the infrastructure is rebuilt, as it has to be anyway, in a different way, to become a great opportunity. And what we discovered is we had 100,000 people without even counting any new development, living and working within a 20-minute radius of that particular point. And so that became identified as a hub and a focus around the new transportation infrastructure and a focus for development by making that land accessible tied to the larger objective of connecting the campus back to the river. And so working with Arab engineers uh, out of New York on the transportation side and Tetratech Rizzo, two uh, very significant firms in the engineering world, we came up with a way of reshaping the infrastructure forming normal vehicular patterns with regular signalized intersections and releasing uh, a great deal of land for redevelopment in the process. And we are now incrementally uh, implementing this scheme. Uh, this goes back to the 1918 vision that I showed you and a new way with a new 21st century set of priorities of reconnecting the campus to the river and here's just a quick, a quick image, and we were actually able to create an eight-acre space bridging right over Storo Drive and connecting back to the Charles River. So now I'm going to quickly take you to Toronto, and you'll see a similar pattern of transformation. And again, uh, over the course of many years, I've been involved in different aspects of this, including 10 years as the Director of Architecture and Urban Design for the city.